Okay, cool. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Stitch. Uh, I'm really happy to be able to present something today. Uh, I'll be sitting down uh, because uh, uh, this is... Um, I see this also as a sort of training ground to do presentations. And I wanted to try a more different format than uh, give, talk and show slides. What I wanted to do is just show a few things that happened uh, that uh, I and a few friends of mine created. And then um, uh, you can all ask questions. So uh, where the context misses, then I can uh, fill that in. Um, I've got... Uh, I if, if there's a... <laughs> Things things are going to happen, uh, so I can show you what this is all about. <coughs> so the talk is called Film Map Transparency uh, Improves Security. We've tested the setup, yeah, so it, w it works. So, uh, so uh, with more transparency, you will have better security. And... Um, what I'm going to show you has uh, solved thousands and thousands of uh, uh, vulnerabilities in the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you uh, what it is and then show uh, a, a nice surprise. So first off, this is uh, the Netherlands, if you're not familiar with it. It's the neighboring country of Germany. <laughs> uh, and um, what you see here are municipalities. <laughs> and uh, the quality of their security on websites. Um, now here we have a nice slider. And we can s show the quality of the security over time. And with a uh, nice detail, look in this region. These <coughs> organizations merge. And now you will see this one disappear in a moment. So with different regions over time, you can still see the quality of security. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of red and some green, uh, so, so some are doing pretty okay. They all started out red. Um, you can see that for every region there's a number of uh, addresses. All these addresses have been harvested automatically through uh, DNS uh, brute forcing, uh, certificate transparency and uh, other means. Uh, also uh, uh uh, what's it called? Uh, NSEC, DNSSEC hashing uh, 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 that allows you to walk the entire zone so, so you can find all addresses of uh, uh, subdomains of uh, 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 an address like Amsterdam has 250 addresses and you can just get them all if you use DNSSEC. Um, so there's something more. Uh, you can see the amount of improvements over time. Uh, in the past four weeks, these numbers are a bit skewed, but uh, they represent the upward trend pretty well. You see the uh, number of organizations and how many are doing well. And we came from zero. And you see over time that from A, 12 until th 31 are doing pretty okay now. Uh, you see how many URLs there are uh, scanned, and what you see is the is uh, a lot of these URLs are being cleaned up. They are being removed from their DNS, so a smaller attack surface. So yay, better. Um, more statistic statistics, <coughs> and also here you can see uh, somewhat downward trends with uh, s certain security uh, things in the past few months. You can see 
who is the worst, who has most problems. Uh, Amsterdam is now sharing the first place with uh, uh, Gooise Meer. They used to have 90 uh, high risk thingies, so now 22, so they're cleaning up pretty well. Uh, it shows when the last changes were, and finally, you can get a report. And it says, this problem exists, this is the documentation, you can check it yourself, and this is, uh, all this data is being refreshed every day. So all the 5,000 URLs will be scanned every day. Since we are in Germany, um, we had the idea, let's roll out to other countries. And that was pretty difficult. But, uh, this, is a not, this is a beta feature, as you can see. If we type a nice command, extra crunchy cyber, we can switch country. Look! <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, there's a lot, there's a lot of domains here. Um, it's a bit, bit slow due to caching, so we are in buy it right now. Uh, let's click and see how they're doing. Look, they're doing pretty well. The numbers don't even fit the box anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, last two days have been very hectic to make sure this could happen. Um, and let's just check if there's indeed a problem with their certificate on their most important domain. Great. <laughs> so, <laughs> beautiful. Um, uh, we there's now, uh, there's a separate type of entity. It's called Regierungsbezirk. Uh, I have no clue what it really means. Um, uh, I, I try to understand how uh, bureaucracy in Germany works, but <laughs> I just stopped after a few days and uh, turned to the enlightened people of OpenStreetMaps. Uh, so uh, th these are just two layers, um, but there are 11 layers. And the goal is to add all 11 layers to, uh, to the map. And I can show you here a little bit of that. Um, have I shown everything? So here are the bureaucratic levels of Germany. And uh, we are now here. And uh, in a few, I think, days or weeks, we'll end up uh, somewhat here. Don't no, uh, we don't need that, but <laughs> for <laughs> to where should this go? Till, so till here or something? Oh, so this yeah. is much too much detail. Uh, even if you take a city like Berlin, it is not that important. I think. Okay, so if you have a really large city, you may want the the, the quarter of the town. Okay, uh, but that's not the regular case. So I it. Think, uh, the, the first th uh, three level uh, levels may be important. The average user will. somebody interested in detail will look for state district because he lives there or his employer lives there. Okay, for the, f for the people uh, uh, listening at home, uh, it seems that we only need to import the first three regions. Uh, those are the most important That's ones. That then, then it's, <laughs> yeah. 
And for small towns, it will go to level five. Okay. Well, luckily, um, uh, all of this uh, has now been somewhat automated away. Let's. Uh, so here are those levels. And uh, already there's a problem when you dig in too deep because the amount of data you have to process uh, is is immense. So uh, we had some out of memory uh, issues. <laughs> so more more bigger machines. Um, uh, the URLs are taken from Wikidata automatically too. So uh, now it's just a matter of saying, I want to import this region, and then it automatically gathers the URLs that match. Uh, and it also checks if the region is really in a country for some reason. Um, and it should it sh we should be able to deploy this pretty quickly uh, soon. But there's one prob problem. The site here is in Dutch and I was wondering, is there somebody in the room that can help me with the German translation for this one? No, nobody speaks German. Speaks German. <laughs> <laughs> so it should be English here. Yes, there's an English version. So you could try to translate that to English, English to German. That should be no problem. Yes, yeah. So who can translate English to German? Okay, uh, please, please stop by after the presentation so I can show how this works. And uh, then the website is also in German, which is nice. Uh, so uh, some other things. Um, it's uh, a Django application. It's really small, but it's a uh, it saved some time with uh, migrations and and such. Uh, we have this beautiful sparkly button, and this uh, is a, a function that um, rebuilds all the indexes that you see on the website. So we store data over time, which is pretty complex to query, and it also has different ways of rating things. It's also complex, and this reduces the complexity uh, into simple to simple reports. And uh People working with this admin interface in the Netherlands wanted to have a nice, beautiful, shiny button to, after they're done with all their work, hit the button and then go. Um, so here, here you can see all the, the, the uh, like this is your standard database uh, create, read, update, delete application. And you can see all the organizations here and all the URLs. And it's uh, it still performs pretty well even with the amount of uh, data that's currently in the system. So let's th this is uh, the list of URLs, and here you can see for a random URL what endpoints they have. Uh, usually, uh, websites have four endpoints: one on IPv6, or two on IPv6, and two on IPv4. Um, one on port 80 that redirects to port 443 that has the website. That's normal. And I think in five years, port 80 will be gone, mostly, or not accepted uh, anymore, and it will all be, be all be 443. Um, and you can see all the all these scans we do. So this is just a simple scan for uh, headers, security headers on the website, and the rating of the TLS done by Qualys. It's missing a few scanners. It, it, uh, we do have DNSSEC, but uh, we want to have uh, some other scans, for example, on Telnet or uh, FTP that, uh, that doesn't use encryption as well. Um, and so there are some scanners that will be added in a few, in a few months. Uh, so there will be more regions that are red and that's nice to see because then they will be cleaned up too. Um, so everything of the, uh, this, all the whole thing is open source. 
you can download it and uh, run it yourself. Um, uh, the server, if you want to run a development server, it's actually two commands and you have your nice development server. Um, <coughs> it says here, if you have the dependencies installed, then you say vagrant up and ta-da, you've got your server with your database and your monitoring and uh, whatnot. So that's pretty, uh, that, that helps. And for development, all the source code is stored in this repository uh, which you can check out and change and do whatever you want uh, it's a Django application so it's uh, well documented how to program for uh, that environment and that helps um, and there are some pictures uh, in the documentation uh, that show what the database model looks like and etc so now uh, it's time for questions. So do you have any questions? Do you want to know anything about this or how this works? Is it legal in Germany to do this? <laughs> okay. So if if do you have any questions on? Yeah, I have one question. Um, it's more about strategy. Um, the goal is to um, bring uh, security to a better state. And I think um, partly you have a psychologic problem because you are punishing people, but you want to them to do things. And then there is a, a simple standard rule if you want uh, to, to do um, uh, people to do something, uh, you need to lure them into uh, what they should do. Uh, and if you want to people uh, want people to um, not to do things, you can punish them. It's, it's a standard rule. Yes. Uh, the project started uh, uh, called fail map, so that's not really positive. Um, and it really, it really did well in marketing like hello we exist mm. because fear um, this has uh, rearranged priorities of the organizations we scan to focus on getting this right uh, so partly uh, it has been uh, being unfriendly has helped because they are required to do it right in the Netherlands so if you just saw that they're not doing it right, then they will fix it. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I completely agree. Um, and we're looking into making a more friendlier name that still has the same effect. But that's that's pretty hard. We could call it... <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Sorry? Friendly fail map. map. Yes, Ex <laughs> excellent. We are also thinking of cyber maps, so the cyber people understand. <laughs> so I have different shades of yellow. There was a, a, a proposal improvement map. Improvement map. Oh, that's nice. Or oops map. <laughs> that's also nice. Oops map. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so I think the project name will be a variable somewhere. I will ju <laughs> just change it as needed. I have a second question. Um, you do a traffic light category categorization, so r red, uh, yellow, and green. Yep. And in that categorization, you have a bunch of security criteria. Yeah. Is it possible to make maps on single criteria or on on a collection uh, a self-defined collection of criteria because uh, you just did the thing with firefox and certificates there are different opinions about um, what is more secure uh, relying on very sign which is okay by firefox or browsers or relying on self signed certificate which would be clearly read now <laughs> Yeah. So, so can people click their own criteria set? Um, currently, it's not possible to do so. Um, there is 
uh, this discussion also comes from uh, the people that are scanned because they want to uh, have their own local in their country relevant standards compared to this is the internet and there are no borders and that's a really difficult discussion because I want to have those people out of the way because it's not it's the internet and there are no borders so we want to have a secure set of or, or secure uh, a meaningful thing so uh, if you have self-signed certificates in this with this scan it will be certainly red uh, if uh, even though they might be more secure um, for public sector I think uh, trust is an important issue but yeah that's a really difficult and long discussion um, it also checks the what you cannot filter on what issue you want of course we want to do that so you want to see where are the problems with headers where are problems with this type of of tls certificate where are problems if because if we would say trust is not relevant then there will be a higher grade for for many organization but most organizations target to consumers, so if the consumer would go to the website, it would still say no. And yeah, that's a thing that I cannot solve, or we cannot solve. I think it could be something uh, which you can use as a lure to, to uh, get people into using it. Uh, if you have the possibility to, uh, uh, to enforce uh, the security policy of a of an organization, as an organization. Yep. So people True. start getting used and they see, oh, there are several additional buttons. We could check them also. Is it so, so in, in the statistic uh, situation, if it goes over time, uh, you get closer to your, uh, to your aim, but uh, you, you don't enforce it the hard way. Yeah, correct. Correct. So uh, that will be a uh, uh, will be added on a backlog to do uh, specific uh, things we scan. Uh, hi. Uh, okay. Um, just wondering, how do you keep the lights on with your infra infrastructure? Uh, well, the money will run out soon, <laughs> uh, but. Um, it, um, this is funded by uh, 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 well, this is uh, the story from beginning from the beginning is um, I wanted to do this because it had an impact. I was asked for a conference to speak somewhere, and I had no like uh, thing to talk about. So I wanted to make something that, that had an impact. And in that same room, there were like two hundred security officers of municipalities. So they instantly panicked, and that was beautiful. And I liked it so much that uh, I thought I have to do something with it. Uh, what I did then, uh, I talked to some people, I showed it, and they said, you have to go to the uh, SIDN funds. funds. It's uh, the Dutch domain register has a fund for if you have projects that improve the internet, you can request a fund uh, from them. Uh, you have to write uh, some documentation, but most importantly, do a pitch that that they can see that you are going to do something nice. And uh, they gave the project 70,000 euros. And that means for uh, yeah, at least this year, we can just keep on going and uh, yeah, have a lot of fun. And while technically most stuff has been realized and works pretty okay uh, or is at acceptable levels the hardest part of the problem of, of the project is making sure it exists after this funding runs out and that's the part where where we are yeah that we are approaching i think for this year and maybe half of next year it will be sort of fine um but then uh yeah how where to host it uh, how to pay the bills that would be interesting and uh, we're looking around and talking to uh, like governments and certs and uh, other uh, 
people that have an interest or organizations that can have an interest in this sort of monitoring on their infrastructure. Um, but uh, until so far, it's it's more orientation to talk to 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 talk to them than that we have found somebody that says here make sure it works and stays working for the next ten years. That's the goal. So. An another question, if I may, um, with with the planned expansion on scanners, uh, do you anticipate any any kind of uh, problems or backlash? Uh, because ca you kind of expose people, rightfully though, but but still they may s may uh, say things al along the line of, uh, you are just uh, publishing our vulnerabilities uh, and you are adding to the problem. So, yeah, how to deal with that? It's really, that's really hard to strike a balance there. Um, for example, we could add a scanner that does SQL map and SQL injection tests, right? Um, only uh, that would be highly unethical to do so. Uh, what, uh, what would happen then is that the vulnerability could easily be exploited by others and that would result in data loss and that would go against the mission. So uh, next to it being illegal. So uh, what we do instead is looking at things that are not really easily exploitable unless you manage the whole network. Uh, and uh, we check things that are checked by most scanners. Like there's uh, one in the Netherlands that's called internet.nl. Now you can do basically the same. Uh, popular news website in the Netherlands and it tests on somewhat the same level of vulnerabilities wi without any them any have a having any fear that it would be illegal so it doesn't really hurt what we publish um, sometimes we do find something that's not okay and that's some um, that's not published but we have a practice called responsible disclosure in the Netherlands what you do is just contact the organization and say, hi, I found this, please fix it. And uh, normally yet then you can disclose it after 30 days. But now if you find something, we'll just delete it from the database and uh, make sure that that's handled uh, in a sane way. So in the Netherlands, it's, it's, it's funny because you can hack anything, really banks and whatnot. The only thing that you have to do is responsible disclosure. So you can start hacking banks, no problem. But if you find something, you have to inform them about it. And if you do that well, you can have talks about it and your even the fame and, and such if you want. Um, any other questions? Uh, maybe I have something. Uh, yeah, you can uh, ask me what uh, scanners will be added in the future. <laughs> 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 so, who's going to ask it? Oh, good question. How uh, <laughs> spontaneous. Um, well, I happen to have a list ready. <laughs> um, currently, um, I just probably a nice oh uh, and this is what we scan right now so uh, having transport security in the first place uh, we can do that because we know what endpoints exist uh, the quality of the transport security and uh, a few uh, headers like uh, can you embed the website um, is uh, encryption required for the to see this website and DNSSEC. So is the website you're visiting matching the IP address that is associated with it? Um, and we do that, uh, most of them do we do daily. Um, what will be added, uh, and that would be added without any meaningful risk, as far as I know, is uh, more DNS stuff, so everything around mail, so like SPF, uh, DMARC, and DKIM. Uh, we can check if they send secure and verifiable mail. 
there's a beautiful pri project uh, called privacyscore.org. They check if the website leaks to any third parties, for example, Google. You might not want that on public infrastructure. Um, and it's also an open source project. And it's very interesting to add that to the list of uh, scanners too. And uh, all TLS services uh, that use that can use start TLS, for example, FTP. Um, it's not really hard to write uh, something to connect to FTP and see if they use start TLS. Uh, also with mail and uh, telnet. That's that's the thing we're planning now. Um, if you have any idea what we could also scan, that's very welcome. This is there a problem with this list? Do you see? C c is anyone seeing like? Oh, can we can can't we do this? Or so I think this probably will be added in a month or two. And yeah, more red regions for us. Um, yeah, that's basically uh, all that 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 I can uh, can show. Uh, unless you have any questions, then uh, we can. Uh, then then that's it. What was the most crazy spot where you found a security leak? What was the most crazy thing? Um, well, crazy. Uh, you see. There were uh, some really old X servers and uh, Mac Mini servers on some municipality, and why do you have Mac Mini dot something on your uh, domain list? Uh, like that, there's not really all these organizations are are brutally serious. So uh <laughs> that's that's why we add the 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 rainbows and the ponies and nonsense. For example. Uh, what we do to f uh, to test translations uh, is we have a language, and I have to uh, exit this presentation mode, which works really well in this editor. Um, because th th these organizations they don't have any funny IT things, as far as I've seen. Um, so we have to add fun ourselves a little bit, and um, this is my f uh, one of the things we do uh, to test translations. We have this language, which shows rainbows everywhere. So you can just change the the, the setting uh, to rainbows, and all the translations will be rainbows, and that's 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 funny, right? Show. So. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah n no oh, oh yeah we had one thing um because this gives a lot there's a lot of organizations mailing us like uh you're doing things wrong you have to rescan um and every day we receive like four or five mails like we have to rescan something or do this or do that and sometimes you get these mails like uh that are really long and because we might not be friendly calling it failure, so and they called it uh that we have an approach of comply or die instead or of comply or explain, and that needs a little explanation maybe um comply or explain is a list of standards that governments have to abide, and they can explain why they don't infinitely. With with no repercussion, so and and this is of course a comply or die approach. So when this was so when we got the email, we instantly changed our tagline to comply or die and got T-shirts and all the volunteers have a nice T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Then uh, thanks very much. Uh, check it out. Uh, all the code is on GitLab. You can just get it uh, run it and uh, see uh, see how it works and uh, also most importantly verify yourself that the outcome on the website that someone else publishes is actually true 
that's one of the great things about this being an open source project. You can independent independently verify that it's true. So, uh, yeah, go do that. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Who wants to help with translations? Nobody? <laughs> so I have, out of the talk, uh, I have the case when you, you had your checklist. Uh, you had uh, a, a, crit a security criterion. Um, HTTP is evil without an S. Yeah. You find a site which delivers via HTTP, the site goes red. This is an example of different security policy policies. Yep. If I have a site which delivers static content only, mm -hmm. HTTP may be okay because if you encrypt all HTTP traffic, you kick out all virus scanners, for example, at the organizational borders. So an organization which uh, deploys virus scanner at its borders is not interested in every HTTP in, uh, connection being encrypted. Uh, this is clearly a matter of policy, and if you say, okay, this is a hard criterion, it's always red, you are evil, then you will have many enemies. Okay, uh, there's two answers to, the to, the, to that remark. Uh, first off, uh, HTTP of encryption does two things. Not only can it's not possible to for others to see what is being sent, but it's also a guarantee that uh, the messages that are sent are not altered. So you get the correct data that's actually intended to be sent. So there, there could not be a middleman, but that's also not really true. Uh, I just say yeah. Criterion, uh, for organizations, what they can do. Organizations, what they can do is uh, they can uh, they they might run their own CA and strip TLS and use their own certificate for all websites. Um, that might be a way to go around that. And they could even offer websites internally over HTTPS where that normally would not have that, but that's a bit bit dirty. Yeah, but it's the but the it's possible. Are you, do you have the right to define the security criteria for another organization yes. worldwide? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Luckily, luckily in, in this case, uh, for uh, many of the things on this map, the European Union does this already. So I don't have to think of, uh, about what is right or wrong. No, that's that's not true, uh, but they require uh, a secure alternative. Ah, so the criterion, then, then you need to define your criteria very carefully. So you say HTTP without HTTPS is bad. Uh, yes, exactly. Ah, okay, that's that's okay. that's what's happening. That's okay. Yeah, that is what's happening. So having HTTP only. Is is not okay, but if you have a secure alternative, mm -hmm. it's fine. And uh, this also works for certain headers. Mm -hmm. um, there are many applications that run on uh, port four for that are that are encrypted and don't provide uh, uh, an insecure endpoint. Uh, but because they are only reachable over an encrypted connection, uh, they might not want to use certain headers that we. And in that case, if you have no insecure endpoints, uh, we drop the checks for those headers also. So yeah, there's there's like the mills that we get are discussions like these also. And it, it requires a lot of thinking and all the decisions on that are documented. And uh, unfortunately, there's something wrong with the documentation, but there's no normally a nice policy on every detail how is it scanned? When is it scanned? What does it matter? What's the r consideration? And in some cases, also uh, the the 
links to RFCs where it says this should exist in this way. So that level of detail is of course important, otherwise uh, the risk is that you're not being taken seriously. So we try to do as less arbitrary standards as possible. So yeah. Um, uh, we have this thing. And here it says what is required somewhere. For example, DNSSEC. <coughs> and here it says uh, also somewhere what EU guidelines require you running DNSSEC. So uh, you can uh, run DNSSEC but, but, but have different implementations on it for different hashes and such. And uh, that's where where we use the standards that is done by the Swedish register, for example. That's that. So yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. When I saw this image of the German <laughs> regions, I just like okay, <laughs> done. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, who would w if the let's let's uh, close up um, uh, and s and uh, stop. Uh, if you want to uh, help translating, please stay and then uh, let's uh, let's sit down, uh, get mate or something else, and uh, do this. So thank you very much.